preparing for the summer dress down at Nehemiah Christian Center. From the first Sunday of June through all of July, August, until the first Sunday of September, we tell you, come as you are. Now, we're never a church that harps on what you wear, but clearly during the summertime, we let everybody know that we kind of expect you to take it down a notch and dress casual and come and enjoy a powerful time of worship. So if you're looking for a place to worship anytime this summer, join me and my family at Nehemiah Christian Center, 514 North Mangum, 10 a.m. Sunday mornings. I promise God will meet you and your life will never be the same. Look forward to seeing you. Come worship with us. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. Then immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea. But both Silas and Timothy remained there. So those who conducted Paul brought him to Athens, and receiving a command for, uh, for Silas and Timothy to come to him with all speed, they departed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. <clears throat> Part nine of our series, Can God Use Me? I want to try to work uh, from this, this subject. This must be sustained. <clears throat> this must be sustained. Stick with me. Hopefully we'll get together. Since last week's events in Charlottesville, Virginia, and number 45's weak comments, followed by an attempt to speak more directly to his blaming both sides, there have been a number of cities throughout our country where the KKK marches were reported to be taking place. One such incident was Friday here in Durham. Another one yesterday in the city of Boston. Similar events were held in Atlanta, Portland, Dallas, and New Orleans. In each incident, thousands of counter-protesters turned out with the purpose to stand against hatred, bigotry, racism, and white supremacy. In Durham, the protest was peaceful with only one arrest, someone failing to disperse in an adequate time. No KKK members showed up to the place, and it's reported that they didn't even have a permit. It was just rumored they would be gathering. In Boston yesterday, uh, the protest was fairly peaceful with 33 people arrest, but thousands in counter-protest compared to about 100 who were coming for what they labeled a free speech rally which really was meant to get a chance to speak hate and hatred publicly. <clears throat> what was common throughout all of these counter-protests was that people of all races and the socioeconomic groups showed up and demonstrated a, a unity specifically and clearly indicating their unwillingness uh, uh, um, to allow um, there to be a demonstration that showed the base morality of our humanity. It is interesting. They stood here to show that they stood against vile and base actions of hatred, bigotry, racism, and white supremacy. These actions showed that there were our conscious and informed people in the world. My Lord, your God. It's good to know that there are some people who still have some good morals about them. If you only watch the news, you think everybody's struggling with morality. But it's good to know that there are some people that have higher morality. 
Uh, in seeing this higher moral ethic rise in the midst of this tension, uh, I believe we could argue that the very thing that's said in verse 11 of our text, in which it referred to the people of Berea as being, one text says, more noble, another text says, more fair-minded. More noble is not talking about people of royal uh, lineage, but to be more noble speaks of people of a higher moral principle. To be considered more fair-minded means people who are impartial, people who are able to deal with things and not be biased in their perspective. According to verse 11, in Berea of our text, the people are said to be more noble or more fair-minded. People that were able to operate at a higher moral principle. It's interesting that if we're going to fight and win against racism and white supremacy, we need people who are of a higher moral principle. If anyone, if anyone should have a higher moral principle, it should be the church. All right, I'm in the wrong place. All right, it's going to be a hard road to toe. Oh, Lord have mercy. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. If, if anybody is going to, should have a higher moral principle, it should be people who call themselves Christians. If amongst the Christians who can be so-so mm, at times, those who are really going to operate with a higher moral principle, it should be those who have said yes to being used of God. Yeah. Let's look at our text. Let's look at our text of Acts chapter 17, verses 10 through 15. This text takes place after last week's scripture in, in Thessalonica, where it was called up where the, 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 the apostles and the team come, and they were referred to as those who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Notice this text that we read takes place after they have been accused of flipping systems. The text in our, our text today takes place in a city by the name of Berea. Berea by definition means heavy or weighty. It is interesting that a city with a name called Berea, which means heavy or weighted, is where we are, we are said to find people who are more noble and people who are of a more fair mind. Is it possible? Is it possible? Maybe it's just coincidence, but is it possible that people of more noble and more fair mind come from a place that has more heavy, more weight or more substance? All right, y'all missed that. What am I saying? In order to be a more noble, fair minded person, you have to be a person of greater substance. Meaning that you can't look at only the color of skin and make adjustment and make uh, uh, um, um, opinions about people. You cannot merely look at where somebody went to school, what side of the tracks they live on, or what kind of car they drive, what kind of clothes they drive in order for you to make an assessment about them. And I know we've been talking about white supremacy, but even in our own community, we need some folk with some more substance. Lord have mercy. It's a problem when our people are more content with having all the latest attire and gear and can barely spell their name. Lord have mercy. School's about to start and you have parents spending thousands of dollars to send their children back to school with the latest clothes, but they have not purposed in their heart to tell their child to learn while they're there. They, they, they've not purposed in their heart to tell their children, you need to be obedient to authority while you're in school. But, but, but go and stunt. Go and, and be, just go and, and, and display what you have with your newest pair of shoes on and walk around like your grand. We must become people that operate with greater substance. 
Lord have mercy because we have been caught up as a people that we are more moved by what is surface than we are moved by what is substance. Surface is what you wear, what you look like, how long your hair is, how straight your hair is. Lord, surface is what kind of watch you have, what kind of shoes you have, what kind of car. Substance is what moves beyond what's on the surface and says there's something about people that goes beneath what you can see. Let's just take a quick, let's just take a quick poll. How many of you have ever made the mistake of looking at somebody and making a snap judgment on surface stuff only to find out later that the surface did not match Lord the in Lord, it, it happens both ways. We accuse people of not being woke because of the surface, but they might be more woke than Lord have mercy. We can we call some folk, we say you're this and that based upon surface, but there must be an understanding that surface is what we make up, substance is who we are. And so our text takes place in Berea, a place, a city that is known for having more substance. Berea is a city in Macedonia. Uh, it, is, it serves one of the capitals of the four states within the country of Macedonia. Ah, but we learn some things. Um, it's not, not a long passage, but I learned some things from looking at these people as they're being used of God in our text. The first thing that I noticed is that, and, and you take notes, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I should have six points to get to in case I get caught up. The first point, the first point, the first point uh, is if you're going to be used of God, some moves have to be unannounced. All right, Paul and Silas, according to our text in verse number 10, they leave quickly and they leave quietly at night. They're in a world that we live in, one that is a marketing and social media world, too many of us make moves with pronouncement more than we make commitment to the move. All right, all right. In our world, we try to be internet wonders, but actually turn out to be blunders. Lord have mercy. We we are attention hounds. We are seeking attention more than we seek to actually do something. Yeah. All right. You know, not you, but your friends. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not not you, but your somebody you know. Okay, they're in your friend circle. They're, somebody you know. There's something like this. They post and tell other people about the moves they're making, really seeking attention more than they're really seeking to make the move. All right. You know how we do it. We do it something like this. We announce we're taking breaks from social media. Just take the break. All right. I'm in the wrong place. You got to get up and post on all seven of your social media platforms. If you need me over the next 21 days, uh, hit me up on, on my hip, on my phone. And if you, if you really know me, you have my number. If you don't, well, then who are you talking to? Pulse and what we're really doing is we're seeking attention and we want people to comment about what we're going to do more than we're really planning to do something. Wow. Or here's another one we get. We announce we're cutting people off. I promise you, I promise you, if I'm cutting you off, you're going to find out, but it's not going to be by announcement. It's, it's going to be by demonstration. It's going to be biblical, Donnell. It's going to be by signs and wonders that follow. Because you're going to look on your page and wonder why in the world do I not see his post? Oh, he's unfriended me. Oh, you'll find. <laughs> oh, 
Or another way that we make this mistake is we announce we're going to work out and going to lose weight. We announce we're going on a diet. What are you really doing? You're looking for there to be some human recognition. You're looking for somebody to affirm what you want to do more than you're committed to doing it. Because when you are committed to doing it, you just do like Nike. You just do it. And so if you're going to be used of God and you believe God's working in your life, on your campus, on your job, in your community, some moves have to be unannounced. You can't go out and tell everybody what you're going to do. Because if you're telling everybody, then when they pat you on the back, that becomes your benefit or your pay for what you did. And if you're really doing the work for the kingdom of God, you want God to be glorified more than you want glory received for yourself. Touch somebody and say, don't announce it. Don't announce it. You've got to keep some stuff to yourself. So the first thing I see is some moves have to be unannounced. Because when you announce some stuff, you allow your enemies to even plan and plot what they want to do to try to stop what God called you to do. The second thing that I see from this text is if you're going to be used of God, you must stay on task. Even though Paul and Silas are leaving Thessalonica because of opposition, they still remain committed to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. They go to the synagogue as usual and they preach about Jesus Christ as usual. They go to the same place. They teach the same message. Why? Because they are committed to staying on task. They did not allow the response of people to deter them from their purpose. If you're going to fight for what's right, if you're going to be used of God, you cannot allow the response of people to dictate what you do. You've got to stay on task. Lord have mercy. I, 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 let me talk to the parents for a minute. Parents know about this. You're praying for your child. You're praying for something and you don't seem to see it changing. You don't stop praying. You keep praying because you believe God is still able to work. And so if I'm going to be used of God, even when I find myself with opposition, I must stay on task. Look at this. Look at this. They knew God had commissioned them for the task, so they didn't change. They, they knew that their purpose was right, so they didn't change. They, they, knew, they knew they were fighting against opposition, but they did not change. I come to let you know God can't use people effectively when they can't hold to the task. Lord, Yolanda, we've got too many Christians talking about God using them, but really they got ADHD. They're a little ADD. As soon as they get a little, I'm telling the truth, as soon as there's some minor in interference, as soon as there's some struggles, they let go and they stop doing what they said God told them to do. I don't understand, and please don't make judgment on me, but I don't understand. And because if I know God and if I know what God has said to me, then I am never going to quit doing what God said until God tells me something else. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that has that type of tenacity. But if God said it, 
It's amazing. It's amazing. Ah, a number of talking to a friend the other week and we were comparing notes of the number of people that we knew who, who, who for years were preachers, maybe not pastors, but preachers. But over time, they stopped totally even preaching or working in ministry and it was not a judgment but it was the question I said I just want to know did, did they say yes to God or did they say yes to what people were trying to make them do because when you say yes to God you've got to stay on task so if you're going to be used of God, you must stay on task. But then the third thing I see, the third thing I see here is you will see results. <laughs> Lord have mercy. That's, that's, that, that, that's what we want, Aisha. We, we will see results. Sometimes when doing the work of the Lord, you will get discouraged. Talk to me, somebody. You, when you're doing what's right, you will get discouraged. It, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. When doing what's right, you will get discouraged. Let's be honest. As much as I feel like I have tried to do things to bring justice, every time you see injustice raise its head in your community, you begin to wonder, Lord, are we making any kind of impact? Are we having any type of a, um, a, a positive influence so it's natural to feel discouraged when you're doing something that's good and sometimes you feel as if no one wants to hear the truth you have to speak you, you feel like nobody wants to hear truth spoken to power. But this text seems to reveal something to me. It shows me in verses 11 and 12. Let me read it again. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness. Look at that. They were more noble. They were more fair-minded. But the text says they received the word with readiness. They received with a heart that was ready to grasp what was being said to them. I, I heard God say something last night when I was looking over my notes when I read that scripture. God said that there are people who I have prepared to hear what you have to say. And if you don't say it, then they can't respond. Oh, the text says right there, it says they were more fair minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness. Uh, this gets me excited because it shows me that when you're being used of God to fight for what's right, you will see lives change. You, you will see people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. You, all right. You will see white privilege dismantled. You will see white supremacy destroyed. This, this text shows me that if I'm being used of God, I can expect to see some results. Now, that may not get many folk excited because not enough folk are working. But but when you are working to know that you are going to see some results, it fuels you to keep on working. It, it moves you. Teachers, you know about this. You're teaching your children, getting them ready, and it comes time to take a test. Whether it's one you give or a standardized test, you can't wait to get the scores and the test scores back to show yourself that what you have been teaching has gotten into them. And God says, when you commit to being used by me, know for a fact you will see results. You, you will see some stuff change. You, the Bible says that the people received with the word with readiness of heart. There were hearts that were prepared to hear what was said. But if... If you don't speak, how will they respond? 
But the text, Christina says that many of them believed. <laughs> this is good stuff to know that somebody ran you out, Frank, but God still has some hearts ready to respond to what he put in you. Oh, oh Lord. Some, some place may not embrace, but another place is waiting with some hearts to hear what it is you have to say. Somebody saying, get out of here, shut your mouth, ain't got nothing to say. But there's another place that's waiting to hear because God has prepared some hearts. The Bible said many of them believed. Many of the Jews came to say, yes, this is a real message. And then the Bible says a number, a great number of Greeks believed. So it was not just Jews, but also Greeks who would begin to follow Yahweh, Jehovah. The text also says prominent men and women. Once again, it goes back to what I said last week. We have to believe that even people in influence need to hear the message of Jesus Christ. It's a shame when you only witness to those that are beneath you socioeconomically. All right, I'm in trouble. It's a, but that's what church does. We, black church are good for that. When it comes time to go witness, we go to the projects. We go, we go to the Section 8 housing because why? We're trying to convince those people that your life can be better. You can go from poor to middle class with Jesus. Never stopping to consider that there's some rich folk on their way to hell that need Jesus too. Lord have mercy. So the Bible says that both prominent men and women made some decisions. Oh God, this is why when you have the right message, you can't be afraid or ashamed to open your mouth because you never know the heart God is working on to receive what you have to say. All right. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. It's, it has happened a number of times throughout the years that the Robert E. Lee statue at Duke has been vandalized. It's happened plenty of times, but it never got taken down till now results all right y'all missed it see there comes a time when you have to make sure that your voice that your voice is getting